All right, so part number two, the drivetrain. Um, I really worked hard to try to get a differential between every single other differential, basically to try to prevent gear wind up, but I just couldn't make it fit. I, I tried the beveled differential, I tried the non-beveled differential, and with the frames that I'm using, I just, I could not fit either of them in there either way. I took some pictures of the of a setup I had with bevel differentials, I thought it would work, but it was just, it did not. <laughs> so, um, for the drivetrain, again, I can easily go all-wheel drive. Now, there's a chance I might leave the first and last wheels off, because um, under, nor under normal steering modes, they'll achieve the, the highest steering angles, and, you know, at, at, at the absolute highest steering angle, it doesn't drive that well. Um, so it might be better just to leave those axles off. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, looking at the diagram, the center of the vehicle, all that space needs to be left open for absolutely gigantic outriggers, which is another key component of the vehicle. Um, so really, my drive motors and steering motors, for the most part, will go here and here. Um, the drive motor will connect, if I, again, if I can cram it all in to at least a two-speed transmission, preferably four-speed, it'll have a differential and it'll power these five axles. The same will be repeated over here. So yes, I'll have to have two transmissions, but, you know, I can't just have one drive shaft going the whole length of the vehicle with all the motors back there. I think it would just be too much stress on one of the axles. So as far as wind-up goes, these three axles, let me <laughs> make sure you can actually see it. These three axles will be connected, but I don't think wind up will really be that significant. Um, and again, there'll be a differential between these three and um, the two up front, you know, if even both of the front two are powered. So I'm not too worried about wind up. Again, I tried to cram it all in there, but I just couldn't. Um, and really, the differentials I wanted to put in before. I had this shifting mechanism in, and to make that rigid, it takes up a little bit of space. So um, as far as powering the vehicle, I do want it to go, not fast, but you know, when you watch a lot of videos on YouTube, you know, they'll show you the boom extending and it might take five minutes and they'll speed it up eight times. I really don't want to do that. Um, and the only way to make things faster is just by adding more motors. So, you know, There'll be at minimum four extra large motors powering the drivetrain, maybe eight. <laughs> you know, it really just, I won't know until I test it. Um, uh, you know, a lot of people say, you know, you can't transmit much power through an eight tooth gear. Well, you can't transmit a lot of torque, but you can transmit a lot of power. You know, if you gear up at your motors and then gear down through the differential and at the at the portal axles, then, I mean, you can transmit a decent amount of power through the vehicle. So I won't know how many motors I'll need until I actually build it, but, um, you know, I want, I'd at least like to be able to walk behind the vehicle, you know, on a smooth surface in a straight line, like at a brisk walk, you know, that's fun to me. Uh, crawling is uh, not as much fun. <laughs> so I think I'm a little spoiled by RC stuff. I have a tracks a summit with a mama monster in it that can go, I don't know, 50 miles an hour. It's completely uncontrollable because uh, the vehicle's not designed for that. But, you know, that's my reference point of 50 miles an hour. So, you know, a quarter mile an hour just doesn't really do it for me. But, um, <clears throat> uh, so that's the drivetrain. The one thing that I've had to do so far, the, the, one place where I've broken Lego code is I made myself some two and a half length axles. It's something I had to do to get the vehicle, um, you know, into the the dimensions I wanted. Um, really, it's pretty much as narrow as it can be using the differentials that I am inside a housing. I mean, it goes right into a CV, into a universal joint that's even kind of sunk already into the hub. So I don't know how I can make it much narrower. Um, I, maybe I could use two CVs, but actually, no, that doesn't even help. But anyway, there's a two and a half length axle in there. I mean, you could use a two, two L, but they fall out all the time. They're really annoying. And all the testing that I've done, 
I have not had those fall out, you know, even at full suspension compression, um, it, it doesn't fall out. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but, uh, whoa. Anyway, um, what would I say? Now that I've figured out the most complex part of the vehicle, which again was getting that steering in there, at least I think that's the most complex part, we'll see. I expect building to go pretty fast um, from here on out. It's just, you know, part of it is trying to find a way to assemble it without having to bend pieces. Um, and that's tricky. I, you know, I cringe every time I bend, I bend something to make a connection. And it's like I do have a pair of needle nose pliers, <laughs> which should never be on anybody's Lego building table. But I have one um, just in case I need to force something in there. But uh, yeah, now it's just about building. And um, the next fun part, the next part where I'll really have to make a decision is when I get to, basically I was going to build this, this, I was going to build all the axles and then it's a function of how much space do I have to cram motors in there. Um, where am I going to put the infrared receivers? One issue I'm working with right now is, you know, I've got the uh, pneumatic cylinders in there but there's not really a good place to run um, the, the tubing down. I actually thought about running it through the suspension arms itself, but the problem with that is when you turn the steering, um, if you'll see that large mass sliding back and forth, that kind of blocks you know, a lot of the space that you have. So I haven't really figured that out yet. By the way, the deck level of the vehicle is basically right there. So when it's at full compression, there's only about one stud of clearance between the wheel and the deck. So, and obviously I'll put some supports in there. I do have room to do that. But, you know, these compress all the way up to the deck. So there's no place to run, you know, a cable through there. I could, excuse me, I can run axles through there. Um, I don't think I really have a need to do that, but, um, so that's the design thing I'm working with. I mean, I know I'll figure it out. I figured everything else out and just, oh, well, hello. <laughs> that's uh, that's Lemon, that's my other cat. The, the, the first cat that you saw was Jack. Meow. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyway, um, that's what I'm working on. Expect updates whenever. <laughs> um,